Welcome back to Mind Pump TV. I'm your host, Adam Schaefer. Today, we're gonna go over a bicep dumbbell curl. The first thing that we wanna talk about when we're doing a dumbbell bicep curl is posture. Now, we're gonna start off with a standing bicep curl, although you can do these in the seated position. Now, why I like to teach them in a standing position is because I actually put my clients in a very unique stance, and there's a reason for that. Now, when you do a bicep curl, the, the main function is just flexion at the elbow. So any other movement in the rest of the body is really unnecessary, and that's gonna actually take away from the work on the bicep, and other muscles will take over. So the position that we get into is very important. So what that looks like is we wanna take the shoulders in a retract position, so I wanna pull the shoulder blades back. Now the reason why this is so important is already most people have this issue where they have kind of a rounded shoulder, and then when they go to do bicep curls, what ends up happening is the front of their shoulder starts to kick into the movement, which is why some people actually feel this a little bit in their shoulder. So what I wanna do is I wanna retract the shoulders back, so peel the elbows back by my side when I do this bicep curl. And once I come to this position right here, my bicep is fully flexed. Any more movement, so look where that dumbbell would, would end up being right here. Any more movement from here to here is now shoulder flexion, which is not working any more of my bicep. So you don't need to take this all the way up to your chin or the top of your chest like some people do. All you wanna do is take it all the way up into full flexion and you'll feel the bicep fully flexed, the shoulder still in that retracted position. In order to get the dumbbell up any higher, I would have to roll the shoulder forward and then the shoulder takes over. We don't want that. So I'm gonna start you guys off in a standing position and we're actually gonna get into what we call a split stance. And in the split stance, I'm gonna shift my weight onto my front foot and my back foot is on my toe. Now the purpose of this and why I love to teach this to clients is because it creates a little instability. And when it creates instability, it kind of forces you into good posture. It's just an old trainer trick that we used to do because if you have somebody who's lifting dumbbells and they're rocking and they're moving, it'll throw them off balance. This kind of forces them up into good posture. So I'll take a client, I'll put them in a split stance, weights on the front foot, I'll tell them to take their shoulders in a retracted position and then the elbows by their side. I also like them to imagine you have a pen that goes through your elbow, in through your side and out the other, and that it has to move on that axis. You never want that elbow to move from that point of axis, so it stays pinned right by the side the entire movement. That's gonna keep everything in the bicep. All right, now let's talk about range of motion. Now, one of the most common mistakes that I see people doing is either shortening the range of motion up too much or going too far when they do a curl. Now, I kind of touched on this a minute ago when I talked about the position of the elbow being pinned by your side, that this is as high as you need to go up. You don't need to go any higher than this. Common mistake I see is the rocking of the elbows and the shoulders. That's too far. You don't need to curl all the way up there. Now, it doesn't mean it's wrong or it's bad. It just means that you're gonna incorporate other muscles that you may not be trying to work. And if we're trying to develop the bicep, and that's our main focus, then we just wanna get right to the top and squeeze the bicep. Now the other mistake that I see people do when they do a bicep curl is they catch it at the bottom. So you see you have this about a 10 degree bend in my elbow. You can open up and fully extend the arms. Now you've heard people talk about don't lock the joints out. It is completely safe to lock the joints out if you keep tension in the muscle. So what do I mean by that? It means when I come all the way down, I don't relax my bicep and let the joints take the weight. I wanna keep the biceps tense. So this is probably where a lot of people get that 10 degree bend to where they're constantly keeping tension on the bicep. But you can actually open all the way up, fully extend, but also still be mentally concentrating, keeping tension in the bicep. So we wanna take the arm through its fullest range of motion, open it all the way up, and then come all the way up to a squeeze without rocking the elbow or the shoulder. So full range of motion looks just like this. Shoulders are peeled back, elbows are back all the way up into that flex position, and I'm squeezing the bicep at the top. Right there, I got full flexion of the bicep. Any more of this is now shoulders getting involved to get there. So full range, all the way down by my side, curl all the way up, squeeze at the top. All right, now let's talk about alternating dumbbell curls or pronating or supinating the wrist while you do the curls. Now, these are great little variations that you can throw into your dumbbell curls there's not one that's better or worse than the other, but I do like to incorporate some sort of pronation or supination in the curl, meaning this. So when I come up and I curl, so some people will start in a neutral position and then they'll come up and curl and they rotate the wrist up like leading with their pinkies as they come up and then rotate back down. Now, 
you're not getting any more of just the bicep work like that. You incorporate a little bit more of the brachialis when you have a neutral grip, which is just a muscle that runs underneath the bicep. You'll hear a lot of bros talk about how that makes the bicep look bigger and meatier because it's a muscle that runs underneath and then creates kind of like this, you know, size on the outside that pushes the bicep out. So yeah, it's a great idea to either incorporate some sort of alternating and supinating every now and then, or you can just incorporate hammer curls and you can get that same effect on your brachialis. Now, the other thing is alternating the dumbbells back and forth. There's not a real big difference between doing both dumbbells together versus alternating. The only real difference is when I alternate, I come up here, this dumbbell on the other side is at rest. So I'm gonna have a little bit more energy. So I typically can lift more weight when I alternate because then I get a little bit of rest in between set versus doing both of them together. This is gonna be a little bit more challenging. I like to incorporate both into my routine. Neither one of them is better than the other. Both are great to incorporate. All right, now let's talk about how do I know if I'm doing this right or wrong? Well, first of all, you know you're doing it wrong if you don't feel it in your biceps. Now, when we're doing an isolation exercise or a single joint movement, it's pretty challenging to not feel it in the right muscle. You should feel this in the bicep. If you do feel this though in other muscles, the most common ones are probably the front of your shoulders and sometimes your traps. Now that's a dead giveaway that you're rolling the shoulders forward while you're crawling and you're getting this movement and swinging with the elbows. And that's actually really common, especially when people are challenging themselves with weight. They tend to use momentum, they throw it up, the elbows rock and the shoulders get involved. Now, if you start to really notice it in the shoulders or in the traps, you know that's starting to take over the movement and you're not getting much benefit for the bicep. So when you do that, retract the shoulders, keep the elbows peeled back, and this is where I like to talk about tempo. This is where tempo becomes really important. Sure, you can do faster, slower tempos, but when I teach this movement, I like to teach a four second negative. So you resist the way down for four seconds, nice and slow and controlled till you open it all the way up, and then you come up one to two seconds. Four seconds on the way down, one to two seconds on the way up. Now when you do that, it helps control the weight. It helps you keep from swinging the dumbbells up and down and incorporating other muscles. All right, if that video helped you guys out, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and share. Also, if you guys have more questions regarding the cues or other points, you guys just leave them in the comments below. We'll be coming back, visiting periodically, and answering your questions. Also, if you like the information that we provided in this video, we have tons of free information. You guys can go to mindpumpfree.com or click the link below.